So I've been playing Armored Core for answer. PORNO! Mecha porno to be exact. Desolate. Mechanical. Coal. Steel against steel. Beams colliding. Missiles penetrating. Straight up. Hardcore. In your fucking face. Mecha porn. That's what this series is known for, besides having one of the most daunting and fanatic fan bases ever. And here am I, <laughs> reviewing the game based on a single playthrough like a complete asshole, waiting to get bent over by them and fucked if I end up saying something stupid. Anyway, <laughs> I know I could have picked any of the newer entries instead, but this one has the words for answer in the title, so it's obviously the best one. The story of Armored Core for Answer is about... Um... Shit. The wiki page doesn't have a story section. Uh... Well, it's basically about a bunch of different corporations that more or less rule the world. These corporations offer housing above ground because the ground done fucked because there's big robots fighting everywhere. You don't really play as a character per se, as instead you just name your pilot, pick a faction, and do whatever the nice lady tells you to do during the cutscene. So the story is mostly a framework for the gameplay, and thus it remains in the background. Though the info during the loading screens and all of the different companies suggests a history rich with lore about war and stuff. It's definitely something that's very possible to dig into, but the game never forces it upon you at any point. What you need to do is what the game explains up front, and the rest is just there if you want it. I like it though. While I do prefer my stories to be story-y and my dialogue to be dialogue-y, I really don't think shoving terminology and backstories in your face would have really done this game a great service. It's a game about fighting robots. And that's really all you need to know to get started. Anyway, your corporation will give you missions, what you then do with the gameplays. And in between said missions, you can customize your mecha. Saying it like this makes it sound like a simple, fun little action game with robots. It is not. You see, you have quite a lot of options when it comes to attacking. Like shoulder weapons, missile launchers, a gun arm, a laser blade, etc. And all of these are depletable, interchangeable, durable, and customizable. In a way, somewhat similar to Dark Souls' stamina bar thingy, every move you make bears consequence. Whether if it's simply flying around or blindly shooting your load, it'll cost you precious energy and ammo, and both of which will cost you your hard-earned cash. So you really, and I mean really, need to strategize and think shit through despite how fast the game might seem. Luckily, it has a pretty beefy tutorial and where it might seem kind of intimidating just looking at it. I mean, fuck if I know what all of these numbers mean, right? I never really felt like I was completely oblivious as to what I was doing. Basically though, all of these numbers are for different types of ammo, and these bars are for your energy what you use while meleeing and boosting. Considering how fast the game is, it's a bit hard to pay attention to all of this. But if I was able to somehow figure this shit out after a while, then I'm sure you can do so as well. You sexy little minx. Now, how the game controls depends almost entirely on how you build your mech. So, if it plays shitty, it'll likely be your own damn fault. Thing is, is that the amount of customization in this game is fucking ridiculous. I could explain why, and trust me I will, but for now, just look at this. These menus are some of the most stylish and sleek I've seen in a while, but also some of the most confusing and complicated ones. 
Things like movement speed, turning arcs, the weight of your mech, the balance of said weight, the amount of ammo you choose to carry and how you distribute said ammo are all customizable and fucking integral as to how your mech controls. Which, and you'll find this to be a common theme here, takes quite a bit of getting used to. Something that is fairly universal though is that there's quite a bit of delay between pushing a button and things actually happening. Like, a lot of delay, as in that the entire machine needs to start running, engines revving, cocks turning, that sort of thing. So pushing square to shoot missile will take one or two secs, and the amount of exact secs will depend on what kind of parts you're using. Basically, every time you change your shit, it'll almost feel like playing a different game entirely. Anyway, a large part of the game centers around managing your finances. That <laughs> might not sound very cool, but trust me, it works. As I already mentioned quite briefly, the amount of ammo you use on a mission and the damage you take equals a deduction on the money you receive because repairs and shit. So not only is using your brain in combat a good thing to do as to not to deplete your ammo prematurely, but you also need to do that in order to keep that money in check, as no money means no new parts, and no new parts means not being able to adapt to the situation at hand. You see, just about every mission requires a slightly different approach based upon what you're fighting and where. Like, certain sets of legs will only work well on water, or some boosters apt for when you need to take on big mecha death machines of low frame rates and doom won't get you anywhere during mech on mech combat. So, focusing on raw firepower alone will most likely get you a one-way ticket to go fuck yourself. At one point early on, for instance, I foolishly decided to pick only the strongest weapons available. So, missiles only, pretty much. Missiles without any tracking. So, by the time I set out on a mission where I was forced to deal with a lot of smaller enemies, I wasn't able to hit them because I needed a rifle for that, that despite being much weaker, locks on to enemies automatically. And once I started getting the hang of what worked and what didn't in a situation like that, I went from not being able to hit anyone to easily A-ranking the very same mission with barely any monetary loss. And that's exactly the game's strengths as well. The fact that everything comes down to you. I will admit, I was definitely a bit frustrated for the first two hours. Like, my weapons were feeling kind of sluggish, I wasn't able to dodge very well, but once I figured all of that shit out, I was having a gay old time and a yabba dabba do time. Granted, spending hours looking at a black screen with numbers isn't too exciting, and I can see how that could scare people off. But digging into this game's systems was a surprising amount of fun for me to do. It's like watching your mech do well and kicking ass feels incredible, because it's entirely your construction and moderately clever thinking that got it to do that. And that's pretty fucking awesome. However. It is with a heavy heart that I regret to inform you that not all is well in the world of Armored Core. <laughs> For one, the game runs like fucking shit. Quite often, and by quite often, I mean most of the fucking time, the frame rate tanks almost completely. Add to that an incredibly slow and not optimally placed camera, and you might just end up with some sluggishness that no amount of customization could ever solve. Which is rather sad, and especially early on, I really could have done without the extra frustration it brought along with it. Then, there's also the fact that the enemy AI can be a little bit derpy at times. I mean, some enemies really only serve as cannon fodder, and if you observe them for a bit, their actions really don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. It isn't too much of a bother during hectic combat, I guess, but some indoor stages do highlight the cleverly masked poop stains in Armored Core's pristine white speedo. 
In fact, the indoor stages are quite fuck overall. The camera, the frame rate, the iffy AI, and the possibly not entirely optimal mech configuration all accumulates into this big fucking whirlpool of frustration, and that shit ain't cool, yo. And something else that also kinda grinds my gears is the fact that certain missing objectives can be a bit vague at times. The missions where you have to escort some cars or just kill everything are fine, but then there are also the ones where they're all like, destroy the cannons you filthy slut. After which I'm all like, oh, oh you mean these, like these big artillery cannons, or do you mean these, these big fucking plasma ray things? All the while dying over and over and running out of ammo, which just isn't any fun at all. In the end though, they meant these missile launch pads that are pretty fucking easy to miss considering how flat they are. They do give a little audio cue once you take them out and some shit is highlighted in red on the radar as well, but in the midst of all the horrible frame drops, the awkward camera and the sheer insanity taking place on screen at all times, it's pretty fucking hard to find your bearings sometimes and it's not exactly a smooth experience. And while they do give a neat little briefing at the start of each mission, the fancy wireframes and blueprints don't really help much when you don't know the context in which they're set in. Uh, it's just one of those things that I really feel could have been telegraphed a bit better. Though, in a way, not being sure of what exactly to do is also a pretty good motivator to get the player to experiment. So, I guess it's not all bad either. There's something kinda special about this game though, and what I mean with that is if it doesn't click with you at all, it's probably just another low budget piece of shit. Which is why I think it doesn't necessarily garner the highest of reviews. I mean, if I was just some reviewer asshole guy and I had to take a quick look at this for some stupid fucking website what I work for, then I probably would have had a bunch of question marks floating above my head as well. I mean, it looks kinda shitty, the music is a bit bizarre, the controls feel very stiff, the mechanics can be rather confusing, and the story is just a tad bare bones. But when it clicks, it clicks hard. <sighs> While I do still think that Zone of the Enders 2 is the best way to do a mech game, this is a pretty close second if not just a completely different route altogether. From start to credits, the game might be a little bit on the short side, but much like Dark Souls, the amount of content, different playstyles and multiplayer elements make the game near endless. Not too sure if I'm really the type of guy who would dig into that all the way, but I guess only time will tell. And so, I lay rest to my book of stories as it's time to have a splendiferous wank over some high-quality mecha pornography. Oh, oh yes, Lord Mian. Oh, oh yes, oh, oh, Spira. Oh, yes, oh. oh, oh. <laughs>